I saw a vision, and it was of the new Elite Vision from Thermalrite. Okay guys, this is the Elite Vision 360 from Thermalrite. It's brand new, it's just come out. Bigger screen, better fans. So let's get this unboxed and see what comes inside the box. Okay, so first of all, we are greeted with the Elite Vision. This will just tell you how to install it. It'll tell you for Intel as well as AMD. That's all the sockets it supports. M4, M5. It'll tell you how to screw the fans in. Oh, the fans are pre-installed anyway. Tell you how to connect the ARGB as well as the 4-pin PWM and the USB 2 port. Because this is what you'll need. And that's pretty much for that. So, let's have a look what the accessory box comes with. Ooh. Oh. Now, the wall frame didn't have a braided cable. It was a standard cable. But this is nice. And then it comes with all the bracketry, everything you need. Uh, thermal paste as well. Comes with all the standoffs, everything you need to install it. So, let's take a good look at this, shall we? Does anyone see the problem right here? It's got proprietary cables. Thermal right. I honestly thought that they may never go down this route, but unfortunately they've gone down the proprietary cable route. Now, yes, it looks nice, but uh, it's a proprietary cable. Uh, uh, look, I I'm not happy with the proprietary cable. So it does actually come off to a daisy chainable RGB, ARGB and 4-pin PWM. So that at least is okay. I guess it's okay, but they do sell these fans uh, separately as well. You can buy these ones separately. Then, of course, then we've got the ARGB for the block. We've got this then, which is a 4-pin PWM. Nice. Nice to see they've gone 4-pin PWM. The base plate. Not the biggest base plate. I like the overall design. Now, this screen does come off like that. This is definitely nicer than the Frozen Warfare. I do like that. It looks really, really nice. I do like it. It looks nice. I like the accents as well. The only thing I don't like is that thermal, right? The proprietary cables. So, it's got the fans. It's got the embossed logo. Now, in terms of the overall specifications for the block, the block size dimensions is 66 mil by 66 and 63 mil. The radiate dimensions is uh, 397 by 120 by 27 mil. That's the overall thickness. The pump connector, 4 pin PWM, like I said, is also 5 volt addressable RGB. The overall fans. Now, when it comes to these fans, these are Thermalrite's very high end fans. So they're 120s by 120s by 25. The overall rated speed is 2150. The decibel rating is 27. The airflow is 69 CFM, nice. Stack pressure is 2.87 millimeter H2O max with a connector of four pin. It's got a SFDB bearing and of course it is addressable. Now the, they don't have any specifications on the little screen, but once I've installed it, I will show you through the software and show you how to obviously install the software and then I will give you the overall specifications for the screen. So make sure you continue to watch. I'll get this on the test bench.
Okay, so when it comes to the overall screen, now it is a 2.73 inch LCD display. Now what you can actually probably see is this is something called push flow. This is basically their mirroring windows. This will mirror the desktop, show you what's on your desktop and you can actually have this running in the background while you play a game. Now this would probably be good for maybe, I'd say Discord, maybe, I don't know because the screen is rather small so whether you could get that to work I don't know. But what I will tell you is it's got loads of different backgrounds it's got loads, it's literally just screaming with different backgrounds, it's got all RGB effects, it's got lightning it's got like disco it's got the earth it's got green it's got everything the environment look at that for a space now this will show you now our space or solar system now don't let the video uh cloud it it looks better in person it looks fantastic really crisp the overall resolution is very very nice on this little tiny monitor now i'll show you a background picture of like the sea and the ocean look at that that looks amazing. Now, the software is very easy to use. Once you install it, it will automatically boot up each time you load into Windows, which is very good because there are softwares out there that don't. You need to manually do it. Now, for people who want it to just automatically do it, this is what it does. And you can have loads of different ones. You can put GIFs, you can put whatever, however you pronounce it, GIF or GIF. You can put media files, you can put anything you can really put your own spin on it you can upload your own video you can put up maybe a logo of your brand or something like that to showcase or just leave it on the background now i tend to leave it on the rgb cycle because if you know well she tech then i love my rgb so i tend to go for the ones with the rgb and i generally actually like the this one for the information just tells you cpu and gpu now the reason why the cpu temps keep rising up and down is because i am i'm actually potting with the software right here and now while i talk to you but other than that the software is very easy and i will leave a link for it down below this is the thermal right elite vision 360 millimeter aio i'm going to put the mic up towards the fan at 50 percent and pull away Very quiet at 50%. Same thing, but 100%. They sound as they're just about to take off. Right then, so when it comes to the overall benchmarking, now I've run my normal run of tests, Cinebench R23, Blender Pavilion, Blender Classroom, and 3D Mark Sheep Test. Reason being, it does hit the CPU differently through different tests. Now, when it comes to what platforms I've actually tested this on, I've actually done something a tad different. This time I've actually tested on AM5 and AM4. The first test will, will be for the AMD Ryzen 9 7900 CPU and it will be at default settings. But first the room temp was 17 degrees when I started testing but did go up to 19 Celsius which is quite odd for autumn but oh well. Right so 7900 default settings. Cinebench R23, idles 32 with a max of 50, Blender Pavilion, idles 32 with a max of 48, Blender Classroom, idles 32 with a max of 49, and 3D Mark Super Test, idle 32 with a max of 63 Celsius. Now, the 7900 with PBO enabled. The CPU did draw 173 watts, but did go down to 162 watts. The overall CPU clocks were the highs at 5.4 and did go down to 5.1 well above base clock so cinebench up 23 idles 34 with a max of 85 blender pavilion idles 34 with a max of 83 blender classroom idles 34 with a max of 82 and 3d mark test idles 34 with a max of 82 celsius now with a 5900x with pbo enabled the cpu did draw 205 watts but did go down to 191 the highs for the cpu clocks were 4.9 but did go down to 4.3 but that's well above base clock so that's fine now for cinebench r23 idles 30 with a max of 81 blender pavilion idles 30 with a max of 78 
Blender Classroom, idles 30 with a max of 76, and 3D Mark CPU test, idles 30 with a max of 68 Celsius. Now, what I'm going to do by here is put up a graph of showing you which AIOs perform good on AM4 because I haven't tested many on AM5 because the AM4 system is my primarily my test rig. So, any other 360s that I've tested with this same standard the same testing methods i will put up right here so you'll see a graph that pops up right here to tell you which one is better okay then so let's just keep this as short as possible now what i like about this i like the rgb i like the overall display i did with the frozen warframe uh the fans they are their highest quality fans they're very good high quality fans with very good bearings and that's it primarily now what i don't like is them using a proprietary cable. Now, I never thought that I would say this about Thermalright. Them going with a proprietary cable is a bit of a downside for me because I don't like proprietary cables because it does limit the consumer just in case they lose or snap that cable off. Yes. Now, yes, you could find it perhaps on amazon but at the end of the day the way i see it is the consumer shouldn't have to look for an adapter or a proprietary adapter for a product they've just spent this kind of money for now in terms of pricing this is probably the most expensive i've had uh, product i've had off thermal right this is between 107 and 112 pound it all depends on which person is selling it on amazon now I will leave links of both for this and the black version because they are exactly the same. But what I will tell you is the screen is... Oh, that looks fantastic. You can see it in the background. It looks fantastic. Now, yes, it does look a little bit smaller than the Frozen Warframe. It's not. I think it's the same exact size, but the uh, Frozen Warframe has got plastic shroud in. So other than that, really, I like the AAO except for the proprietary cable. Now... It's going to get my recommendation, but on one caveat, Thermrite, you need to get away from proprietary cables. Stick to ARGB. Surely you could come up with something that you could just daisy chain three fans because you've started pre-installing the fans on the AIOs, which I find a very good thing because the consumer hasn't got to worry about which way they put the fans. But they need to work a way of doing a simpler way than doing proprietary cables because at the end of the day the consumer shouldn't have to worry just in case that cable snaps and personally i don't like proprietary cables and i know a lot of you would agree with me on that one so thermal right you need to go away from proprietary cables i suggest doing like a daisy chain uh pigtail at the end of each fan but make the cable short at those sides and make the last fan the longest cable so it can reach the back panel that's my suggestion whether you agree that's up to you but if you want to buy this because it does get my recommendation because the fans the overall screen as well as the performance is fantastic on am4 and am5 so at least you know that it works for both platforms and it's good yeah a bit loud but that's just one of them things <laughs> other than that i think it's a good aio so if you want to buy it i'll leave links down below and as always don't forget to subscribe because i've just had loads of stuff come here today it's unbelievable you guys want pc builds well i'll be doing two of them just before christmas so make sure you subscribe for that and as always this is richard for welshie tech good bye